Palisade Radio is brought to you by First Majestic Silver Corp., one of the world's purest and fastest growing silver mining companies. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Palisade Radio. This is your host, Colin Cattell. On the line with us today is a very special guest. His name is John Hathaway, and if you don't know him, he is the co-portfolio manager for the Tocqueville Gold Fund, which manages $1.3 billion at this time. It's up uh, over 50% since the beginning of the year. John, welcome on the program. Thank you very much. Yeah, I guess the first question to ask you uh, uh, for somebody managing uh, such a significant portfolio in the gold sector, we've had a few rough years that are maybe behind us now. So uh, with, with, the, with the move the last three or four months, are you convinced that the bottom is indeed behind us? Yeah, it feels like it is. Um, uh, I guess you know what I see is uh, uh, a lot of skepticism, a lot of there's very little participation. Our flows have been positive, but they haven't been robust. And I see that as true right across the precious metal sector. So what makes me think this is for real is uh, there's no, really nobody is aboard other than the people that have stayed with us and, you know, kind of suffered through the last very difficult couple of years. So, yeah, I think, I think, we, I think we've seen the turn. You've been in the space and following the stock market for years and years. Uh, you've seen bottoms happen before in the gold sector. Uh, it's very important that you point out that a lot of people aren't involved. Uh, for somebody close to the market, I am seeing private placement financings fill up quicker. There's more demand, but that's from a very select insider group of people. Uh, what what happens next in this kind of a market uh, to, to really confirm the next leg up? When do you see more people starting to come in? Uh, my personal opinion is just a guess. Is I don't think we're going to see a lot of excitement until we get to, um, uh, well, I think crossing 1300 and staying there would certainly uh, uh, get some interest. But I really think uh, um, 1400 would definitely trigger more interest. So we're, we're, we're not there yet. The other thing I look at uh, is silver is a terrific um, – barometer of sentiment and it has lagged gold year to date i think when i last looked at it gold is up like 22 or 23 percent silver is up 18 usually silver is it well it's always been gold on steroids um and for it to lag like this to me is another sign the public just isn't there yet so i i kind of feel like it's still early days um and uh you know, I, th- I think by the end of the year, that'll change, but we're not there yet. Right. And in terms of how you're investing with the fund, uh, can you talk to our audience a bit about what's, what is in the fund currently? Are you investing in any physical bullion? Uh, and in terms of the stocks, are you looking at the majors, the mid-tiers, or the juniors? Okay. Well, we, we have a position in physical metal, and um, it's roughly 14 or 15% of uh, total assets right now. Um, it is not the gold ETF. It's physical metal stored outside of the banking system. It's with, uh, Brinks, um, because I don't even trust it with, um, any of the banks. Um, so, uh, that's 15% of the fund, let's say. And, uh, our, our positions are, are publicly available. If you just go to our website, tocqueville.com tocquevilleassetmanagement.com. Um, but we have a good representation in some of the major names that most people would recognize, things like Newmont, Goldcorp, Barrick, and so forth. And then we have uh, a lot of the mid-tier names that wouldn't be quite as familiar. Names would be things like uh, Torex, MagSilver, um, Tahoe, um, just to name a few. And then we have a basket, uh, maybe 20 or so positions that are in the smaller, smaller cap space. I'd say, generally speaking, market caps of uh, under 500 million. And um, as I said, that's a that's a pretty large number of issues. Uh, maybe that's might be 10 or 15 percent of the total assets of the fund. So it's pretty 
pretty diversified. John, as you mentioned, the holdings are available online. Does the fund participate in financings directly uh, into companies via private placements, or are you uh, purely buying things on the on the publicly traded market? Well, uh, most of what we do is, is is publicly traded. Occasionally, we will get involved in a, in a financing. Um, so, yeah, no, we're not uh, doctrinaire about it. We will. We'll, we will get involved in financing when we see that there's a legitimate use for the money. And the, the one thing I can't stand is bought deals, um, and we generally do not participate in them. But if a company comes to us and says, look, we need money to get us from here to, from here to there, and would you help us out, we'll, we'll definitely... Uh, participate in things like that. Can you talk a little bit on the on the smaller side of the portfolio, what you could uh, quantify as a, a junior or maybe even a micro cap? Uh, there's there's uh, over a thousand of them out there. And uh, obviously your fund is very selective in choosing uh, which ones. The obvious check boxes are management and uh, a good resource. But at this point in the market, a lot of those do exist at a deep discount. What exactly are you looking for to put in the Tocqueville Gold Fund? Well, for, I mean, to, just for starters, it doesn't make sense for us to have a position of much less than, say, uh, $10 million, uh, because it just doesn't move the needle. And if we, if we can't see a way to get to, say, that size position, um, we're, we're probably going to stay on the sidelines. Um, you know, beyond that... Uh, you know, management is obviously very important. You have to remember, uh, we've been doing this for almost 20 years now. So we know pretty much everybody in the space, and we know who's good, we know who's bad, and, you know, everything in between. And we've had the most success when, when we've invested with people that we've made money with before. Uh, so that's very important. And obviously, we look at the quality of the assets. Uh, we have a, a research team. Um, that's as good as anybody in the space, in my opinion. And uh, we visit mines. We do all of that sort of thing. We have uh, frequent meetings at our offices in New York, travel to conferences and so forth. So we cover the the precious metal space very intensively. And, and, and uh, um, you know, I'd say 95 out of 100 different stocks are of no interest to us whatsoever. So we are very, very, very picky. John, it seems that commodities are eternally cyclical. Uh, we're hopefully in the beginning phase of an upward move. And as the saying goes, getting on the right side of the trade with commodities. And when the tide comes in, all the boats rise. Uh, it, and I guess an important point for investors and for yourself managing the money is, have you, have you given any thought to... Um, you know, how long this bull market is going to go on and, you know, what you're looking for for maybe an exit point to, to start getting out of some of these positions, obviously far, uh, a point that's far away from right now. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, these cycles typically go for four to five years. You know, the up cycle starting from 1999 was uh, actually 11 years. Um, with the down part of the cycle from 2011 was another four and a half years. Um, I would start this cycle at the end of last year, so six months into it. Um, you know, I'd say at least four more years to go. But you, that's just kind of a that's just kind of a guess because you have to look at what's really going on and um, um, you know what's driving it, uh, um, and and see whether those things are. Uh, Totally reflected in 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 the uh, in the markets, uh, and right now I would say we're kind of like we were in 1999, where you basically had a sold out market. And um, if you think back to then, um, nobody knew back then that you know there would be a housing crisis or there would be um, uh, a global credit meltdown. Um, or you know even even a bust in the in the internet um, you know dot coms or, or zero interest rates so so quantitative easing so you know I think we're kind of in the same space I kind of think that there are things that are coming our way and you know we can all guess at what they might be um, but we won't know them 
until they make headlines maybe two or three years from now. But I can guarantee you that the systemic risk that has been building up as a result of quantitative easing and reckless policies by um, not just the Fed, but, but all the central banks of the major countries are going to have consequences that are going to be quite significant um, and I think probably harmful to um, the average investor who doesn't have exposure to the gold, the gold mining sector. There's a lot of debate about what the results will be from Fed policy and all the money that's entered the system. Uh, one would say that that's almost certainly going to lead to inflation, uh, but with all of the problems currently around the world, others could claim that a deflationary collapse could certainly happen, uh, similar to what we saw in 2008, but maybe uh, much worse and quite different. Do you have any expectations on, on which it will be, and do both bode well for gold? Well, the, the 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 quick answer is both are both um, are favorable for gold. Um, to know what it's going to be uh, is much harder to say. Uh, I would I would say that the, the prevailing forces are deflationary, um, and that means that you know with all this money creation, uh, the global economy the global economy is just limping along and, and it may well be at the beginning of a significant downturn, which would put huge pressure on credit at the corporate level and, and at the sovereign debt level. So that's deflationary, but the, but the, the response of, of public policy is inflationary. It's money creation. It's, it's more deficits, um, greater, greater entitlements, all this sort of thing. So you have kind of opposing forces. I don't think you really need to know the answer to decide to have some exposure here because they're both, they're both good for gold. We're, where we're headed is basically a significant devaluation of paper currency, whether it's the dollar or the euro or the yen or whatever other currency um, investors care about. Um, I think it's absolutely uh, certain that um, a dollar today is going to be worth a lot less in three or four years, and that that's going to have consequences. It, it probably means that returns in the equity markets are not going to be very good. It most likely means that returns in in the bond market are not going to be very good. Um, but I think it does mean that uh, having some exposure here to, to gold and Gold mining stocks, silver as well, is is a terrific um, strategy to deal with that. Well, you just touched on a dilemma that a lot of investors have, in that many things are overpriced around the world: the U.S. equity market, the U.S. bond market, uh, even real estate and uh, other hard assets like art, which have had a lot of money rushing. And the only thing, or one of the only things that has been undervalued up until recently, and and probably still is, are you know, gold and silver and, and the related equities. A uh, question slightly out of context of the interview, but, um, you know, for people that are interested in investing in, in the Tocqueville Gold Fund, where else is is, um, is safe money to go into at this point? Uh, it's hard to find anything outside of the precious metals. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, if you're a contrarian, you might think about um, hard assets. Ener you know, energy certainly has been beaten up. Hard rock mining, so base metals. I don't really, you know, I, I, I just didn't, wouldn't want to steer anyone there because I don't really feel qualified to say that. But just looking around as a contrarian, you would have to say that the things I just mentioned have been beaten up, and certainly everything else you can you mentioned is 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 fully to overvalued. Okay, well, I appreciate that, John. I want to uh, I want to ask you and. Uh, I don't know if you're able to say, but if there's any companies that uh, you're really focused on right now that are your favorite picks or, or maybe a little more macro uh, types of companies, if you don't want to touch on particular ones, of course, if people are interested uh, in, in investing as you are, they can simply invest in the Tocqueville Gold Fund. But uh, any recommendations would be great. Yeah, no, when I, when, when I get that question, I, I have to say, you know, I, I, first of all, compliance won't let me mention specific stocks. Um, and therefore I would say go to our website, you'll see what we have 
you know, our biggest positions, what they are. You'll see, if you want to get into the 13F filings, you can see everything that we actually own. Um, so that's the best answer I can give you there. Um, I think that more than ever, investors should think about having physical metal. I do not think the ETF makes a lot of sense because you might as well just own a security, you know, and it's, you know, you've got so many um, intermediaries. You've got, uh, in the case of GLD, you've got State Street Bank. You've got uh, HSBC as the custodian. You've got a lot of moving parts, and you, you can't redeem it for physical metal. So I would say to anybody who's thinking about constructing um, exposure to precious metals, some piece of that should be in physical metal, whether it's uh, gold or silver, or, or preferably both. Great. John, I really liked your comment earlier about using silver as a barometer uh, for for interest, uh, retail interest in the space, and the fact that silver's lagged gold, and especially lagged the, the related equities, says that money isn't really uh, rushing in, into the space at this point. Uh, that would that would make me think that you probably would have quite a bit of interest in silver, especially if it continues to lag, and the associated stocks that have upside and optionality to silver. Is that the case? Yeah, I would actually say uh, the silver stocks have done better than the silver metal, um, which I think has lagged the stocks. So we have plenty of exposure to silver. You know, you can just look through the names in our portfolio and see that. Um, and they've had a, they really have had a better run than the, than the, the uh, silver uh, bullion itself. But again, I think it's such, such early days. I wouldn't, I wouldn't agonize too much over um, what to do here. I would just have quality names, buy the dips. We're in a bull market here. Buy the pullbacks. Don't chase things. Stay with quality. And, you know, again, um, so many people try to do this on their own, and they, in, they invest in these, uh, these scams and these sort of uh, flaky um, concepts that are promoted, again, by mainly the Canadian investment banking world. Um, you know, if you don't want to go through that, I would say, uh, you know, hire an expert. That would be us or, you know, some of the other funds have good managements too. And uh, um, to me, that's a much better way to go because, I, you know, the research that we do is very intensive. Um, and, uh, yeah, We'll make mistakes, but I think we're, by and large, we're less likely to do that than an individual investor is likely to do. And, and therefore, you know, we get the first call, we get, we get, you know, we get the flow of ideas and information. So I, I, I kind of think unless an investor has some sort of special contact or some special advantage in terms of uh, picking individual stocks, you're much better off and much better off hiring a fund manager like us. All right, John, I won't take up any more of your time. I really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing your ideas and concepts on the uh, gold and uh, and gold equity space. It's refreshing to see us back into a bull market and everybody making some money again, especially the Tocqueville Gold Fund. Uh, I believe it's TocquevilleAssetManagement.com for our listeners to go right. to. And uh, John, yeah, the ticker the, the ticker is TGLDX. Okay, there you have it. So TGLDX, you can find that. It's listed on the NYSE, I believe. No, it's not NYSE, but if you, if you search for TGLDX, you're going to come up Morningstar or Lipper or any of these, uh, these um, or Yahoo Finance. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get right into the, uh, into the website. That's right. Okay, all right, John, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Colin. Okay, bye-bye. think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bid. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen? Are you too stupid? 